Dear learners, welcome back to the second session on conservation of resources and energy. One of the session of MHD012 ecosystem and natural resources. It is part of, as you know, uh, program postgraduate diploma in sustainable science. So, in continuous to the uh, that last session, which we talk about environment and perspective of laws of energy in the matter. Uh, then how resource was depletion, what is the pattern of resource depletion and we talk about conservation of resources. So, in this second session we are going to look into the energy conservation strategy, what we can do it and uh, uh, we are going to talk about uh, that uh, mineral scarcity, then expanding the res uh, that resource base uh, related to mineral, recycling, resubstitution of minerals and uh, about the uh, art wisdom society in brief. You know uh, the same place and the simplest way of minimizing energy crisis and other related problem is energy conservation. When you talk about energy conservation, it talks about the conservation of usable energy, not uh, energy as a whole. When if you are talking about energy as a whole, it is in a uh, against the first law of energy. So, conservation of energy can be achieved by decreasing the energy wastage and increasing energy efficiency. For example, if you replace 100 watt in, in condition bulb with a 25 watt CFL or lower uh, watt of uh, nowadays we have uh, that LED bulb. So, when you do not require any fan or light, you have to switch off that, right. This is some of the example. Then, uh, when we talk about this efficiency of energy, means increasing energy in efficiency. That means when we are looking for increasing those energy efficiency, first hurdles with us is it will have higher initial cost. But if you look into longer term, by uh, the course of saving by lower energy consumption that have a more weight than the uh, cost, uh, the higher cost you have uh, I mean, use in the initial phase, right. So, reduction in energy consumption does not mean in the same time a decrease in living standard, but use of energy efficient system and when you use a energy efficient system, you know, that may have a different qualitative lifestyle. At the same time, you know, we when we have decentralization of energy supply and production, particularly from alternative sources, that max. For example, we are using uh, uh, the solar energy at household level, or this kind of approach uh, makes energy self-sufficient. So when we talk about energy conservation, it is not only saving the energy or saving the non-renewable resource set, it also reduces the, the environmental ecological degradation. So, that is why we are looking towards shifting the alternative energy sources. When we shift into alternative energy sources and uh, following the energy efficient route, this also ensures carbon efficiency. Means reducing carbon output per unit of useful work done. Let us try to understand how we have to improve energy efficiency and how we have to avoid the people about saving the energy and how a government can play an important role in achieving those goals. So, when we talk about improving in, uh, energy efficiency, we know that there are many ways like you know not converting, we should not convert or not converting energy from one form to another form unnecessarily. Means, you know, uh, unnecessarily don't put your uh, light on, unnecessarily don't, I mean, burn your foil wood. Right, example, simple example. Then, reducing the steps of, of energy conversion, increasing the energy conversion efficiencies minimizing transportation or transmission of energy and increasing the efficiency of transport or transmission of energy. So, all such kind of steps will reduce wastage of energy 
that occurs that second law of that energy that said the conversion of energy and uh, transport and uh, transmission. So, decentralization energy production and transport transmission network and other planning tools, such kind of tools can help in saving the energy. So, energy conversion and transmission, they sometimes made more efficient by simply readjusting data and fine tuning all equipment. Use of su superconductors can dramatically increase the efficiency of all aspects of electrical energy use. Then, for example, we use the co-generation method that we use the spent heat of power plants along with electricity generation. This is also one of the way increase of energy efficiency. So, the energy efficiency of many industry can be increased by using uh, like recycled materials. We know that recycling saves energy than use of virgin material. So similarly, for example, when you took about recycle of steel, an uh, example, when we recycle the steel uses, uh, then uh, it uses only 14% of energy you would have used for processing that other raw material. Similarly, if you look about uh, then 95 of energy saving is gain in recycling of the aluminium. So these are some of the examples. Then when we talk about how we have to giving energy awareness, you know, educating the people about the individual and that environmental benefit of energy saving, use of energy saving practices, that we need to increase. But in most of the cases, what happened? In this also, the initial investment is very high, but if we look into the cost effectiveness of the energy saving system in the long run and Cost cutting on the mental and physical health due to bad environment. They are the incentives what we get out of that, right? For example, in some cases, uh, like you know, using a pub, uh, that public transport system, it may not always be convenient. However, you know, uh, unless unavoidable, wherever possible, unavoidable circumstances, except that unavoidable circumstances we have to increase the use of public transport system it will save a lot of negative uh, environmental impact of the resource use right similarly adopting a bicycle culture it not only saves a lot of money on energy maintenance it also promises a good health due to physical exercise and by ensuring a pollution free environment Utility companies also they can also play a great role in energy saving without compromising their profits. They can produce energy efficient and durable products to reduce their investment in production of more electricity and pay for the environment and pollution directly or indirectly. That you can say that just kind of uh, I mean uh, management pattern is called demand side management. So sometimes uh, these utility com uh, company they actively promote energy saving by keeping some other incentive to the consumer. For example, helping consumer improve the insulation of their homes and use of high efficient uh, that uh, energy like CFL, LED, while selling high efficient air conditioner and heaters. Besides making such efforts, uh, that community and individual also must exert intense pressure on elected officials to develop national energy policy based on much greater improvements in energy efficiency and a more rapid transition to a mix of renewable energy sources. In coming to the role of the government can play, you know, they should play a major role in increasing energy saving by influencing the energy market. First step is to set a positive example by using the most up-to-date energy efficient technology right by government in the government offices. At the same time, the government can fund and influence private agencies to fund the research and development of new energy efficient alternatives than their first consumer. You know, the use of most up-to-date energy efficient appliances by the government that will give a positive impact to the society you know this can start the production and run the market and the product then can reach the general public easily at a reasonable price 
Now, government could implement that energy efficiency measure within their jurisdiction, though it may have some difficulty to take such a step. They should influence the fuel efficiency standard board for vehicle, establishing energy efficient standard for buildings and appliances, gradually increasing government sponsored resources and development to improve energy efficiency, and giving tax credits and exemption of government rebates for purchases of energy efficient vehicles, housing, building, and appliances. You have seen such kind of initiative in India. Right, that we have discussed when we discuss about sustainable development goals in the course one. At the same time, when we talk about tax breaks and uh, tax breaks and subsidies, they can also be given to industrious individuals that are more energy responsible. Right, consumption of energy from non-renewable energy sources and the use of inefficient uh, uh, that appliances, they may be taxed heavily so as to include ecological environment and health cost because of the use of such kind of energy sources. So this tax will not only discourage such consumption, it increases the funds of the government which can be used for further improvement. So different energy sources can also be taxed differently as part of their life cycle environment and impacts so that it can save us to rely more on renewable energy. For example, you know, the public transport vehicle, they may get fuel energy at a subsidized rate than the individuals, right? So another important way to improve energy efficiency is modify electric utility regulation, means through regulation, right? So such kind of things uh, we are also uh, implementing uh, that, uh, in India. Then coming to, we talk about energy conservation now. Uh, we need to uh, understand about mineral scarcity, how to deal with mineral scarcity. We know limited mineral resources is there. So, mineral scarcity can be dealt by adopting two major strategies. Number one, expanding the resources base means, means by locating new ore deposit or cycling all materials. Number two, Decreasing the demand for the substance by finding alternative of substitute for that particular substance or simply eliminating the need for it to technological development change in our lifestyle. So these are the basic two strategies which we can follow to deal with mineral scarcity. This can be look into how to expand the resource base, how to recycle uh, the substitution, durability, and dematerialization of all those mineral sources. When we talk about the expanding the resource badge, you know, it aims at exploring new deposits of mineral as one deposit depletes. So, the high grade deposit that remain to be discovered are smaller, less accessible, and more expensive to exploit, for example, under the sea. So, once the high grade deposits are depleted uh, that more number of low grade deposits can be explored. However, if you look into this situation, uh, that uh, the quantity of metal dug from that mines, the disturbance in ecosystem, the energy input, and the pollution cost for getting unit pure mineral will increase tremendously. tremendously right? Uh, some of the few geologically common mineral like you know iron, aluminum, manganese, etc. You know that we can follow, and then higher grades ores are uh, and such kind of uh, that uh, that geological minerals that uh, uh, that higher grade ore, uh, uh, their higher grade ores are very rare. But if you look into lower grade of ore, uh, they are more abundant. The same, uh, in the same way, when we talk about the metals such as copper, tin, and zinc, they occur either in geological concentrated high grade, the mineable deposit, or with very low grade deposit of the high grade deposit, which hardly can be used. So, in such situation, the alternate part is decreasing the demand of those resources. And coming to the recycling, we talk about the recycling of resources and material in the last session. Today, here we're going to talk about recycling of those minerals. 
We know that recycling of material is one or other way to reduce our demand for extraction of virgin material. You know, it increases the uh, stock of usable material virtually. Uh, for instance, a ton of pure material at a recovery rate, right, of 80% get stretched into 5 tons in effect. The recycle recovery rate is always less than 100% because there is wear and tear, rust and corrosion and other processes till it is to the finished product. Then when we, use, we are in use also. So a recycling recovery rate of 90% is extremely difficult for any of the matter. In practice, the, re, the current, if you look into the current recycling efficiency for many common metal, it is only approximately about 30% or less. The only material for which a higher rate of recovery is possible are, you know, precious metal like gold because they are very non-reactive. And, uh, you know, returning use item for collection, you know, it is not enough because the recycling loop is closed. And uh, when the recycling loop is closed, when it closed, it closes only if collected items are used again to make product that is repurchased. So the loop will often go unclosed if product made from recycled material costs more than the products made only from virgin resources. However, you know, widespread recycling is occur. It's not occurring. Very unfortunate. Until it is economically feasible. The point is that we do not recycle until unless it is economically feasible. So simple first, simply you pass the laws requiring recycling is not enough. The another region uh, of a frequent high price of recycled material and then virgin material is the cost of energy, including human labor is very high. For example, you know, mining and processing aluminum and many other metals are very energy intensive. Because recycling aluminum uses much less energy, there are strong post incentive process, heat and cause the loaf. So, in every term, recycling just one aluminum can save enough energy to run a television set for three hours. So, uh, this is the case of uh, that uh, some of the metal like you know, uh, aluminum, aluminum, right? But when you look into some other material, you know, there energy and uh, that uh, consumption and recycling is much higher than the process of production from the virgin material right in some material uh, like newspaper and the glass it saves considerably less energy than recycling of aluminum however uh, when we look into the human energy such as process of collection sorting the newspaper and glass and uh, you know the slim profit margin this kind of small profit money will disappear. So one option is, you know, what uh, the base option is to appeal to consumer to purchase recycled product, even if they cost more to increase recycling, to make it on a wide scale, society can uh, levy higher green taxes on the virgin resources to boost the price of products made from them so that the recycled product will be cheaper and loop will be close to consumer demand. Right, this is the answer what uh, we have to do to increase the use of recycled uh, uh, material. Recycling uses energy, water, and I know such kind of recycles of resources in the same time is also not free from pollution. However, if you look into the energy requirement, it is much less. For example, we talk about aluminum than the energy used in getting the same amount of material from raw material. So, if recycling extends extend the effective amount of sustenance from a uh, number of years, the stocks will not sustain forever due to our consumption demand. Right. So, at times we may need to switch over to other substances for getting the same tax, preferably renewable in, uh, that inner, uh, that renewable resource. So that's why we're talking about substitution. At a point of time, 
As I told you, if there is not enough of certain material for coping with our demand, the only option remain is finding an alternative or substitute for it, which is similar to that properties. For example, you know, with tin can be substituted with aluminium and still for different purpose. So this substitute can also be found for many such gas materials such as lead, zinc and mercury. On the contrary, now in certain cases, finding a substitute is not possible due to unique properties of material like platinum and other metal are used as catalyst in chemical process. Mercury is the only liquid and densest metal at elements, right? And they are absolutely necessary and these are absolutely necessary in modern uh, that metallurgy. So, substitution for this kind of uh, that uh, that material uh, may be may not be an easy task right the other is you know uh, plastic we use plastic it could be substitute a number of metal but most plastic are derived from petroleum which is non-renewable rapidly diminishing resources in such case bio oil or other such source coming from biomass could be used for making plastic that is and uh, we, wherever possible, we should find a substitute whose stock is renewable in nature. Then coming to one of the characteristics of uh, that resources, durability, right, and dematerialization. So another way of simple way to reduce the demand for mineral resources to produce durable goods that are designed to last as long as possible. This can be done by manufacturing the best quality of material and designing them in such a way that they could be repaired, rebuilt, modified, refurbished, or used with other products. You know, we can say interchangeable joint use in glassware and so on. Very, very good. So, reuse of material can save a considerable amount of material, energy, money, food, drink, and so on. These are some of the classic example refillable glass bottles and, uh, and uh, these are some of the examples then another strategy to reduce the size of product where possible is the dematerialization a smaller product say you know car may use less amount of material and energy for doing the same task than its counterpart means uh, miniaturization what that happened in electronics, they can also set substantial amount of raw material and energy due to their efficiency in material. Means if we have smaller size, terms of time in terms of energy. But sometimes, you know, the dematerialization process brings a lot of complexity in the design of product and incorporates uh, such kind of materials like, you know, alloys that may become virtually impossible to disassemble and recycle them when required. So, uh, these are some of the limitation of uh, this uh, dematerialization, right. Then when we talk about sustainability, you know, we are talking about recovery, reuse and so on, so on practice. So, this sustainability also counts or should count environment and cost. In the sense, what I am trying to say is that when we are talking about sustainable approach, when we are talking about how to influence the people, we do not count the environment and cost when you are pricing a material or pricing a product. As we know that we are overused resources because they are too cheap. We pay the materials, timber, petroleum, many other virgin natural resources, but those when you talk about when look into their page they do not count the environment and cost that is one of the reason it is very cheap and we are uh, overusing that those environment and cost we talk uh, we have already talked in the last uh, few sessions also about the five is aesthetic value emotional value environmental services ethical values long term economic values that is not counted when you price a product so the price paid by consumer for natural resources are now actually omit this particular environment cost. So we have to, I mean, uh, consider all those when you're pricing a material, uh, when pricing a product. 
Another way to incorporate long term indirect costs is to use basic market principle. Consumer can demand sustainable products such as those met with recycled material. All environmental problems are you know, closely intertwined with economic costs. You know, this is, it is very true and very true of resources, most of resources because their extraction use are directly determined there by their profitability. Destruction of resources and unsustainable activities are more profitable, that is why. So in many cases, if you look into from that angle, sustainable activities produce more jobs than unsustainable, unsustainable ones. So extracting resources are often mechanized and involves fewer jobs. Collecting used material, making furniture or any item from recycled or reused material would employ many more people than logging wood, etc. Similarly, tourism employs a larger number of persons, auto repairs which promote resource efficiency by ensuring consumption of less virgin materials for performing the same task also promote much higher uh, uh, than the number of jobs than automobile manufacturing. Right, these are some of the examples. So one of the model when uh, we can look for sustainable use of resources is kind of art wisdom society. We have discussed about the loss of matter and energy in the uh, in this session also in last session. So every individual resources they use automatically add some low quality energy in the form of waste and uh, to the environment. So our individual use of matter energy resources and the contribution of waste in the form of heat, in the form of matter or pollution to the environment uh, may seem small and insignificant. But uh, this individual contribution is only one way the inevitable 6 billion plus individual of the club and each year there is an addition about 90 million newcomers means population is increasing increasing population created such kind of issues right so most of today's advanced industrialized countries if you look into those advanced industrialized country will see their view of consumption is largely high waste or high throughput society style that attempts to sustain ever increasing economic growth by increasing the throughput of matter and energy resources in their economic system. So say here in this uh, flow chart you will see that this flow to the economics of society to planetary things where pollutant and waste are end up right. So, if more in a moon, more energy and material sources are used and wasted at an ever increasing rate, eventually the assimilative capacity of the local, regional, global environment will be exceeded. Thus, at some point, high waste or high tropical society becomes unsustainable. So, a stopgap solution to this problem is the conversion to a more sustainable metal recycling society from unsustainable high tropical society. Right. This will allow economic growth to continue without either depleting matter resources or producing excessive waste and environment degradation. So it should be kept in mind that even though recycling matters have energy, allow some amount of high quality energy uh, is required and add, uh, it also adds waste heat to the environment. Along with development of a matter recycling society, lowering down the population pressure and the per capita consumption pressure on resource base is highly required for sustainability. Else we must have an inexhaustible supply of affordable high quality energy and environment with an infinite capacity to absorb and disperse waste heat and to dilute degrade waste matter, disperse waste heat and dilute and degrade uh, disperse uh, heat. So, Again, there is a limit to the number of times some materials such as the paper fiber can be recycled before they become unusable. So, this infinite resource utilization approach undoubtedly allow us to buy some time, but it is not a solution to more and more pressure on material sources base, even if all of them were somehow for factory recycled. Uh, some of the long term solution to our environmental and low uh, and resource problem is to shift to a sustainable low waste society or art wisdom society that is the way of society we have created here you will see uh, this flowchart 
how we have to exactly following this have a quick look into that high quality energy we have to then give a low quality heat energy and recycling and so on right this is exactly a sustainable low waste of Arhudim society based on energy flow and the matter so today uh, in this session we talk about the energy conservation uh, and from the point of improving energy efficiency energy saving awareness role of government and we look into how to deal with mineral scarcity how to expand the resource base how to recycle the concept of recycling the uh, minerals its substitution durability dem uh, that uh, dematerialization at last we uh, talk about art wisdom society so thank you thank you very much